going to be talking about persuasion in this chapter. And for this lecture, I am going to be using all examples of advertising. Uh, I'm doing this for two reasons. One, because they are good illustrations of the content. But two, again, I want to continue with the message that social psychology is everywhere. And it is certainly present in the advertising that we see. And we absolutely see advertising all the time in our lives. So now, whenever you're seeing advertising, I also want you to think about social psychology and how you can use social psychology to understand your daily lives. Is the elaboration likelihood model. The elaboration likelihood model says that persuasion occurs through one of two routes, the central route or the peripheral route. The central route uses facts to persuade people, and the peripheral route uses feelings. So here's an example of the central route and the peripheral route in an ad, and I'll give you a moment to look at these and then we'll talk about them. So you can see that the central route ad is giving a lot of facts about this Mercedes Benz, and it's giving you things, you know, concrete things to think about, about why you might want to purchase a Mercedes Benz. If you contrast that with a peripheral route ad, it's just a cool looking ad. And it makes you think like, ooh, the Mercedes Benz is kind of cool. There's no facts that you're learning about the Mercedes Benz, but you are having positive feelings towards this Mercedes Benz. So these uh, ads are examples of a central route ad and a peripheral route ad. Both elements into an ad that's best. And uh, pause the video and look at this, and then when you're ready, uh, unpause it and we'll talk about it. So in this ad, you have peripheral route. You have positive feelings because that's a pretty adorable baby. Um, and so you're going to have positive feelings towards that baby. And it also has central route because there are facts. And the facts are talking about protecting her from... Um, these childhood diseases by giving her a vaccine. And so in this ad, it's using both peripheral route and central route to give a message. About promotion versus prevention focus. A promotion focus um, ad or persuasive argument is going to say, hey, if you do this, then good things will happen. And prevention focus will say, hey, if you do this, bad things will happen. And so a promotion focus ad is going to be talking about, oh, all the positive things. And a prevention focus ad will talk about the negative things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have you click this link below and watch this Subway food ad. After you watch it, come back to the lecture. And while you're watching it, um, think about which part of the ad is promotion focus in which part of the ad is prevention focus. So go ahead and click the link, and then when you're done, come back to this lecture. <laughs> so that ad always makes me laugh. And the first part of the ad is the prevention focus part of the ad, talking about how you don't want these things. You don't want double blubber or thunder thighs. Uh, and the promotion focus part of the ad is the part of the ad that talks about these are things that fit into um, healthy heart diets, and you do want to have a healthy heart. So this ad does a great job of illustrating both the prevention focus and a promotion focus, and that's why I always use it. But I want to uh, I'll take a little bit more time to talk about the distinction between prevention focus and promotion focus. Prevention focus ads tend to be far more effective than promotion focus ads because prevention focus is on the basis of fear. And fear is a pretty basic emotion. And if you can get somebody by their fear, it's really hard to overcome that. So I'm going to give an example of a persuasive message that it has a prevention focus and how despite the fact that um, – this message is really not correct. People continue to believe it because it's framed in a prevention focus and it makes it hard for them to evaluate this message. So what we're going to talk about is the MMR vaccine and the autism hoax. So some of you may already know about this. In 1998, Andrew Wakefield published a paper linking the MMR vaccine to autism. So first I should say that there are 
many, many more vaccines than the MMR vaccine. So one of the problems is that people are taking this paper and they're applying it from just the MMR vaccine to all vaccines. But we're going to explain how this paper itself isn't even worth anything. So there are serious and major ethical violations in this study, appalling kinds of violations. So first, the researcher was paid to find evidence that this vaccine causes autism and had applied for patents for an alternative vaccine. So he was paid for it and he also had even more financial interest because he wanted to prove that the vaccine that was being used wasn't worthwhile so that his vaccine would be selected. So he had huge financial incentive to find uh, that there was a link between this particular vaccine and autism. Next, it only had a sample size of 12 people and several of the participants' parents had financial incentive to report that the vaccine causes autism. So it was a very small sample size and even with that small sample size, it's hard to believe that a lot of those parents were correctly reporting what was going on because they had a financial reason to say that there was a link. And so this paper in 2010 was fully retracted and Wakefield was thrown out of the medical profession. And um, there are some people who say that this is the most dangerous medical hoax within the last hundred years. Um, the rise of measles, mumps, and uh, rubella is a serious thing, and there are a lot of doctors who are very concerned about it. And none of that would have happened if this guy hadn't been trying to make money. So that is why the, that is sort of the information about why this study is just totally, totally false. Further, the signs of autism tend to manifest around the same age as when children are receiving vaccines. Now, we are all very good critical thinkers. We're all psychologists here. And we know that correlation does not equal causation. So even if your child receives a vaccine and then later on develops signs of autism, that doesn't mean that, those, that the vaccine caused autism because age is a confound. Age is happening both to determine when your child should be getting a vaccine and when signs of autism might manifest. And as psychologists and as people who understand research, you understand that you cannot make a causal claim with just correlational data. Lastly, there is overwhelming evidence that vaccines don't cause autism. There was a meta-analysis of 1.2 million children, which is a number that's pretty much too big to even wrap your head around. Um, by Taylor, Swordfurger, and Eslick, and they found that vaccines don't cause autism. In fact, children who did not have the vaccine were 16% more likely to have autism than children who did. So not only do vaccines not cause autism, but then the children who didn't have the vaccines were even more likely to have autism. So why do I present all this information? Because the point is, that if you tell a parent, this vaccine might cause autism, that is a prevention focus message saying, don't get this vaccine because if you do, this bad thing is going to happen. Your child might have autism. And despite all of this evidence that you can see right now on your screen, that there is no reason to believe that this vaccine causes autism, Many parents cannot overcome that prevention focus message and take this information into consideration and realize that vaccines actually should be given to their children. Because the prevention focus message is so incredibly strong and people find it so very difficult to overcome them, they are very, very effective. And in this case, it's actually causing huge problems and a lot of um, children are getting sick and there's um, a lot of doctors who are very concerned and so this prevention focus message is having sort of a disastrous effect and even with all of this evidence that you can give to parents they can't overcome this prevention focus message so this is meant to explain to you how very strong prevention focus messages can be